It's Bob, Spike, and Joe at 736, 24 before 7 o'clock. Coming up in just a bit, Wendy Weir, Bob Weir's sister. Really? Uh-huh. Trees and flowers? Trees please? and flowers. Oh. And that Jerry gives her traffic updates on the hour. <laughs> no, are you make, you're not making you, that no, up. No, read this. Look at the bottom. Look at the he bottom. He does give Bay Area traffic tips. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. She asks him, like, if the bridge is jammed up. Right. Wendy okay. Weir, the D is silent at the end of weird. <laughs> I-280 is really backed up, Garcia Spirit told Weir. You might want to try an alternate route. There's an overturned tanker truck on yeah, the eastbound I-8. You do know there's a tape deck in your car, don't you, Wendy? <laughs> Maybe it was the radio and she thought it was him. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know. Uh, 736. I, it goes. 99.9 FM, KISW. Wendy Weir, sister of the Grateful Dead's Bob Weir, says that for some reason, the late Jerry Garcia has been talking to her from the hereafter. Wendy tells us what Jerry's up to these days in her new book, In the Spirit, Conversations with the Spirit of Jerry Garcia. And what do we have here? A cosmic connection? A loony family member? Well, you know, I don't know. Some some people's spirits are just so powerful. We decided we let death will not stop. Let Wendy come on herself and let you be the judge. Wendy, good morning. Welcome to KISW. Wendy, hello. Thanks. Oh, we got you. Okay. Got me. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. <sighs> I know your grandmother was great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that an amazing spirit? <laughs> truly, truly. You should have her on the program more often. Well, I'll tell you what. You know what? It won't be hard to talk to her. <laughs> oh, you, wow. you can get in touch with her for me, too. Uh, <laughs> Wendy, uh... Uh, of course, we were all saddened uh, to lose Jerry Garcia, and uh, and now you you know you're communicating with him uh, in in your book here. Is this uh, is this a, a, a communicating with his memories, or do you really think you're you know you're actually talking to the guy? Oh, I'm actually talking to the guy. You are actually talking. I'm to actually the guy. talking to him. Yeah. Well, yeah. Suddenly, my grandma seems normal. Well, well, <laughs> let's 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 go back just a sec to grandma. Could you tell us about the very first time that you spoke with Jerry, or he spoke with you, or how? Well, what well after he died, I presume. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, because I've known Jerry since I was fourteen years old. So, um, actually, before the beginning of the band, because my brother used to take guitar lessons from him. So, uh, when I first talked to Jerry, uh, it actually started a few hours after his death. When my brother called me from New Jersey, he was on the road with Rat Dog, which is his own group, and asked me to check in on Jerry's spirit for him. And this is something that Bob and I have done over the years with friends that have passed on. So this is, um, so Bob's, that was the next thing I was going to ask. Is Bob standing behind you on this? or is Oh, yeah. He's, or is he's, he going, I don't know, man, Wendy might be a little, <laughs> you know, the medication might be off. Something. No, he's had enough experience with this, and we do things together that, that he knows it's, it's real. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, so Bob it, called and asked me to... How do you know, by the way, when you're talking to a spirit, that it's, you know, maybe someone might not be pretending to be the, the spirit? Is I've, had, I've had over 10 years' worth of training in this, uh -huh. so I approach it um, with a great deal of experience and, um, as, and professional training. Do you get that training in San Francisco public schools, or do you got to, you know, go to a <laughs> private, private yeah. school for that? I get it from people all over the place, yeah. so from professionals in the field. What's Jerry saying up there? I mean, is he, he he obviously must be happy, huh? Well, he's definitely happy to be free, you know, from the physical body and from addic addictions. This is, he has a real anti-drug message in the book. Okay. And he's really honest about the fact that, you know, he used drugs down here on Earth, but it's not the way. Not the way. No, and the message is one of, uh, the same as the 60s, it's just on a higher level. We really need to you know, express and experience love and joy and oneness and respect. And Does he tell you anything about who he's hanging out with? Is he playing with Jimmy or <laughs> John well, Lennon? Or? The, the spirit's unlimited, so he can be playing with whoever he chooses whenever he chooses. Mm -hmm. And he can also be with each of us that wish to talk to him. Have people been reluctant to believe this? I mean, you obviously have probably gotten your share of skepticism, I would think. Honestly, from of those that um, have communicated with me, because I have 
my uh, an email address and uh, PO box in the back of the book and ask people to communicate with me. Those that have communicated directly with me are incredibly supportive and have a lot of their own dreams. So I'm getting all of this great information of people's own experiences with Jerry in the dream state, both be before he died and after. What killed him? Does he say that? <clears throat> Is it the drugs? Is it, uh, you know, the... Uh, was there some specific he did that day? Did you ever get any uh, specifics? I never checked in on the autopsy report. He had... Um, well, you could just well, ask, ask him. Ask him. Right? Yes, <laughs> really probably no. Well, it was a physical reason why he died. He had been... He had stayed a lot longer than he had planned. He had... In, the late 80s, he had almost died from a drug, from, um, uh, he had a diet, went into a diabetic coma, and he chose to come back at that point, and so he actually stayed longer than he had planned because he wanted to be with those he loved, and he wanted to play the music, and, and he really loved being here. So when he died, he just actually drifted into a sleep and never woke up again, and it had to do with water around his heart. Right, so it was uh, not a painful thing for him. No, he actually, from what the coroner said, died with a smile on his face. Right. Does uh, does he give you a glimpse? Uh, I'm sure you have your own beliefs of what the afterlife, af uh, what the hereafter is is actually like. Um, well, is there a buffet? You know that kind of <laughs> question that people wonder. It's of our own creation. It's whatever our belief system uh, is at the time of our passing. Oh. So it's there's no. So believe in something else. good then. Well, definitely. Yeah. Wow. We definitely. set we set our own uh, own little shop up there. Uh -huh. That's a cool theory. Yeah. yeah, and then you know, depending upon what our beliefs are, depends upon, you know, how long a rest we need in the astral, which is the dimension above the earth plane, and then we are come to a state of where we can review our life and do we choose to come back and. So um, are there are there any guilty pleasures up there? Does does he miss something on earth that he can't get in the, in the afterlife? Yeah, he misses the music and being with all the people he loves. Right. I mean, he does he miss cheese hoagies or? He misses food and he misses the oh, but computers if, he, too. if it's heaven, <laughs> if it's heaven for him, there's cheese hoagies there. Yeah, but yeah. being physical has its own real special qualities. Yeah, no juice dripping down your chin in heaven, but... <laughs> you know, sure Do you think Jerry would be bummed that you've published a book of these conversations? And you're, I mean, a lot of people would say you're kind of profiting off of his death. He insisted upon it. I had no plans on publishing the oh. book or doing any, any of the information, yeah. uh, doing any of this. And in the spirit, he... So I kept saying, nudging and saying, you got to do it, you yeah. got to do it, you got to do it. There's more to this than you know. This is just an aspect of what I want to do, mm. so get it out there. That's the same thing happened to Moses. Yeah. Moses, yeah. Moses did not want to carry the tablets down from the mountain. Exactly. Carry them down, Moses. God, they're heavy. Carry them down, Moses. Here's and a party. They're having a party. They're having a party with a fatty calf. <laughs> carry the tablets, Moses. And look what happened from all that. Yeah. Yep, Prophet City. Yeah. So Wendy, we Wendy, know. you you mentioned that the hereafter is of our own uh, making and what we believe, and so I, I want a uh, follow up question on that for you. Okay. What do you envision the hereafter like? Uh, just radiant bliss. Radiant bliss. Joy. Yeah. That sounds boring, isn't it? Isn't no. Boring? Mm -hmm. Another day of radiant bliss and joy. Yeah. yeah. Today's forecast: radiant be. bliss, uh, scattered joy throughout the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I see, to me, I mean, if I, that's a cool theory, because I'm going to think about that all day, because if I get to decide, you know, if I get to, is this what you want it, mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, then it's going to be a combination of what I was taught in catechism mm -hmm. and Monty Python's Flying Circus. <laughs> hey, that'll be great. Eventually, be very you'll, funny. Well, eventually, though, you'll evolve into a state of bliss, because that's our natural state in the spirit. Radiant and then bliss. you might choose to say, hey, I want to come back and do this Monty Python thing, and then be reborn. And oh, you, oh you, you're into re reincarnation? Yes. Okay. So is Jerry, is Jerry coming back? Oh, that's up to him. Wow. It is up to him, huh? That's up to him, yeah. And hang around in radiant bliss for a while. Well, he's really, he still really hasn't totally left. He's very much involved in the earth plane and uh, still has a mission to accomplish. His, he actually has become the Grateful Dead. He was the one that suggested the name back in 1965, and oh. as fate would have it, or synchronicity or whatever, he has become the Grateful Dead. Now, I read this thing on the Internet, and I know you can't believe everything you read on the Internet, so I don't know if this is true or not, but it, he, you said, or at least this report claims, that you say Jerry 
is giving traffic tips from up there on the Bay Area. And he'll tell you about the uh, the (laughs) best road to take into town. Is that is that a fake? That's nothing of my doing. I have no idea. It didn't happen. (laughs) If you asked him, I mean, could he or? Um, it's sort of not what our conversation is gotcha. about. That's a little trivial. For the, the other things they talk about you is that you speak with dead pets, too? Oh, I speak with uh, rocks, crystals, trees, dead really? pets. What has a rock got yeah. to say? Oh, there's a lot of wisdom there. Most of it has to do with being patient, though. Well, hey, life's yeah, I'm going to lie here for another two million years. I'm in radiant yeah. bliss. Something will happen. Yeah. Well, if you're a rock, yeah, you're solid as a rock, right? Well, and a lot of us need that experience. We aren't very patient in our lives. I'm not. I All right. have it's a hard said, time being patient. It says you speak to flowers and trees. Yeah. Now, we know that the, we know what the trees are thinking. Get away from them apples. My apples. <laughs> <laughs> but what do the flowers say? It's whatever I need to hear at that point, because I ask for um, what words of wisdom they might share with me. So it's their advice to me. Put up with the manure, you will grow. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> sure, it's stinky and there are bugs, but it will make you grow. That's pretty much that's the essence wisdom. of life. Right? That, is the, that is the whole yep. philosophy of life right there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know, it doesn't compare with Radiant Bliss. Joe? I know you've done uh, some other books, uh, some children's books and things. Is this your full-time gig, Wendy, or do you do a 9-to-5 job on the side of your writing? Well, this is not my full-time gig. This is uh, more of one of my passions. And the first two children's books were done in conjunction with my brother, Bob. Right. And one was on the rainforest and one were on, was on the coral reefs. They were conservation education books for children. Yeah, they were very nice books. Uh, you can yeah. find Wendy Garcia's books, I'm sure, in all the... Wendy Weir. Wendy Weir. I'm sorry, Wendy Weir. Excuse <laughs> sorry, me. Wendy. Yeah. I'm sure you can find Wendy's books in uh, Amazon.com. Actually, Barnes no, um, the children's books have just gone out of print. They've been around for a while, so... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, what about this new one? The, oh, of course, the new one you can find on a- Amazon.com or in the bookstores. Okay. Um, and in response to your other question, I don't have a 9 to 5 job, but I work... Um, I, you know, I work for myself, basically, doing a lot of things of which environmental education is a part. Wendy Weir, sister of Grateful Dead's Bob Weir. How's Bob? And what are his musical plans, if you don't mind my asking? Well, he's just heading out with Rat Dog for this weekend in Aspen. And he just got married, so he's taking a little time off. I heard oh. he got married. Yeah, congratulations to him. Yeah. That's great. Cool. All right, thank you, Wendy. Good chatting with you. Great, thank you. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. 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 What's your take? Um, well, first off, nobody could follow your grandma. So anything we do, <laughs> I, I, anything we do after this point, we might well it might be 23 trans- years before I have another radio orgasm after that woman. Yeah. So this lady, she believes, you know. You think she believes? Sure. She, I don't know. I think she's, it's a living. Today I'm talking to my laundry detergent. <laughs> it says, don't mix the colors in whites and in hot water. No, I think that, you know what I think? Uh, any, if anybody thinks differently, go ahead and call. 421 Rock, if you believed every word she said. Frankly, I think the same thing as I think when I see the Psychic Friends Network TV spot. Yep. It's a living. Yeah, it is. That it is. It's for entertainment purposes only. And that she's just, you know, writing books, writing she's new age it. books. Yeah, she's milking it. What do you think, Joe? You fall for a lot. Well, yeah, I don't think she's necessarily talking to Jerry Garcia. I think maybe she thinks she is. Maybe. I have no doubt she's hearing voices. Yeah, if she thinks the rocks are talking to her, why not Jerry Garcia? Hey, rock, where you step it? Bob Rivers in the morning with Spike O'Neill and Downtown Joe. And now, the resources of the entire 710 Cairo newsroom. And Laura Gallucci. Bob Rivers in the morning on 99.9 FM. Hey, uh, Travis, uh, find someone who buys it hook, line, and sinker. Can. There's a bunch. <laughs> that would be all right by me. There's shops in Wallingford that sell the crystals, right? Yep, right. Uh, oh, two blocks yeah. from my place. <laughs> do you have a crystal hanging up somewhere? Uh, I do. Yeah. You <laughs> talk to rocks. You ever I talk to rocks? I don't talk to rocks. No. How about Andy? No. <laughs> Does he talk to rocks? <laughs> talk to rocks? <laughs> no. Hey, Mr. Rock, I'm going to throw my frisbee your way, dude. <laughs> <laughs> don't bonk you, buddy. 16 past 8, KI stuff. Oh, boy. Thousands of people in the Seattle Everett area are still without power because of yesterday's... Th-